What's the word, y'all? Pascal Siakam is now a part of the Indiana Pacers. Now, we kind of had an idea this trade was about to go down. Yesterday, Shams tweeted that the conversations were very fluid and that three first-round picks were involved. And the moment I read that tweet, I said, there's no doubt in my mind Pascal Siakam is about to be a part of the Indiana Pacers because anytime you could get three first-round picks for an expiring contract, you pull the trigger, and they did. I was so confident in it that I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what? I got to wear my Pacers gear. This is the only piece of Pacers merch that I have because this was the last time that they was anyway uh shout out to the Pacers they did the deal Pascal Siakam as far as we know and I always got to say as far as we know Pascal Siakam was the number one potential trade piece on the market and he's gone he's an indie and that sets maybe sets the market a little bit and we'll kind of talk through some of those things and I say as far as we know because I, I had <laughs> no idea that Kevin Durant was gettable a, a year or so ago. So you never really know the trade deadline. Things get kind of crazy. Here are all the details. The Indiana Pacers are finalizing a trade to acquire all-star for Pascal Siakam in the deal that will send Bruce Brown, Jordan War, and three first-round picks to Toronto Raptors. New Orleans will be a third team in the deal sending Kira Lewis to the Raptors. Three seconds on that. Every NBA tax nerd in the world knew that the Pelicans were going to trade Kira Lewis to get them under the tax, and they did that in this deal. Now... Indiana is sending two 2024 first round picks and a 2026 first round pick to the Raptors. One of those picks is their actual pick. And then another one is the worst of a Utah Houston Clippers OKC pick, which is going to be at the tail end of the first round because OKC and the Clippers are both very good basketball teams. All right. So those are all of the details. And that 2026 first round pick, because it's been about an hour since the trade has gone down, it doesn't like there's any protection. So that's completely unprotected. And again, we mentioned that the Indiana pick is unprotected too, but the Pacers are are a playoff team at the moment and acquiring Pascal Siakam, you would assume that stays the case. So we're talking about some picks from the Indiana perspective that maybe not something you care about whatsoever. Because you don't pull off this type of trade without the assumption that you're going to be able to retain Pascal Siakam. Now, if that's not the case and Pascal walks in free agency, then we look at this trade differently. But as of right now, you gave up Bruce Brown, who you gave that bag to this offseason. A lot of people question that he's been looking pretty good, but it wasn't a guaranteed contract for the future. You turn that plus Jordan Warrell, who's sometimes in the rotation, sometimes not in the rotation, to pa pa Pascal Siakam? Oh, it's going to fit like a glove. A lot of y'all know that the NFL Pacers, as of right now, are the best offensive team in the history of basketball. It's kind of skewed because of the pace and everything. But as of right now, that's factually true. They are the best offensive team in the history of basketball. And now they add a little bit more fuel to the fire. Again, under the assumption that Pascal will resign, this feels like a no-brainer. And it's very on brand for the Indiana Pacers to do something like this. Other than last year, because uh, because Tyrese Halliburton got injured, the Pacers has always been a team to build towards the middle they're never gonna be really really bad and then boom they're gonna make some trades they're gonna do this in order to hit that next step we saw that when they traded all-star Demontis Sabonis to the Western Conference in exchange for this this young guard that looked pretty good throughout his first year and a half and Tyrese Halliburton now he has blossomed to an all-star potentially multiple time all-star not potentially he is a multiple time all-star and they they set Pat on all of their assets because before this trade, they had from 2024 all the way to 2030 as far as their own draft picks. So they were just play, playing around with house money at this point. Who is a person that we believe can help us hit that next step? Should we sit on our assets and wait until the offseason? Or should we acquire a guy right now because we're damn good right now? And the answer was, let's acquire him now because who knows what can happen. You get him in the door a couple months early. You showcase, hey, hey, Indy is the place to be. You play a couple games, 20, 30 games with Tyrese. We make a little playoff push you ain't even thinking about free agency well the alternative is you let him hit free agency you try to acquire him then but he might have had lunch in um uh detroit with a 64 million dollars he might have had lunch in philly with how much money they they gonna have so you get him in now to say hey we traded these assets for you because we really believe in you for the now and the future. And there's no better place than here in indianapolis the reason i love the nba so much because there are so many different ways to make things happen um, if you look at their roster, I mean, they have Tyrese Halliburton, who they acquired via trade. They have Benedict Mathurin, who they drafted, obviously. They acquired Obi Toppin. They drafted Nimhard in the second round. They had this pick because last year they fell off. They acquired Buddy Heald. They acquired TJ McConnell. Again, Bruce Brown, who they picked up in free agency and then flipped him. Jordan Rora, uh, Aaron Neesmith, who was a part of the, the Malcolm Brogdon trade. And a lot of people thought that the Pacers didn't get anything back. And now Aaron Neesmith is a quality NBA player. They acquired Jalen Smith. And Miles is like one of the sole draftees that are actually like getting real, real PT. So they've always been... Jim Boylan is on the... 
I did not know Jim Boylan was on the staff. Okay. Again, it's just another way to make it happen. We don't need to bottom out every single season to get a star because we can trade for one. We don't need to do this, do that. We're going to be consistent, give our fans a good product, and then when the time is right, we pounce. And that's what they did with Pascal Siak. Now, it's probably going to be a minute since we see these guys together because Tyrese is still with his injury. I think it's a hammy and a hamstring injury can go a lot of different ways. But eventually, we will see these boys on the court together. And I think that number one offense of all time is just is just going to be better. I mean, right now, the top two of fast break teams in all of basketball is the Toronto Raptors because, of course, Pascal Siak and Scotty Barnes are on the team and then the Indiana Pacers. And now we're we're taking away one of the best fast break players in the, in the league right now and adding them to to one of the fastest paced teams of all time this should just be really really good and though he might not be as good of a defender now as he has been like two to three years ago Pascal Siakam obviously is an upgrade defensively for a team that lacks a bunch of long defensive players I mean Pascal Siakam is that for them and because you've been able to build your team without having really good draft spots and things like that you feel comfortable giving up these picks because again this year we're a playoff team that other pick was like we don't really care about the 23rd 28th overall pick and then in 2026 you just assume you assume that with good health and resigning Pascal Siakam we're going to be in the playoffs again so let's let's pull a trigger with the Raptors I'm just happy they did it <laughs> bro that was conversations about the the alternative of not trading him letting him play the season and trying to resign him in the offseason with the idea that we can flip him for something even more if he's under a long-term contract and I'm like bro please just 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 give the keys just give the keys to, to Scotty Barney and let Scotty be the guy. And now he's completely got that. Um, You get a contract that is expiring or an option in Bruce Brown. You determine whether or not he can be a part of your course slash future. And, and, and that's something you decide after the season. And then you get, you get three first round picks. The same thing we just mentioned with the Pacers, though. I mean, those picks, at least if everything goes perfectly, aren't very super valuable, high picks. But who who really knows? This is an organization that, that drafted OG Ananobi with the 23rd overall pick and, and, and drafted, or did they trade for Pascal Siakam on draft night? Either way, at the end of the first round, I think number 26 or 27. So they've been relatively successful in the spot. Now, recently, it was like Malachi Flynn over Desmond Bain. So it hasn't been 100% hits, but this is a spot that they've been pretty comfortable with and have had success. Everybody's going to keep trying to uh, compare it to, I guess, what they could have got last season if they made the trade, but without us knowing exactly who was interested or what they were potentially willing to give up, it's hard to really say. I mean, I, I have been a guy that said that they should have made these adjustments, make these trades back last season, but better better late than never because they waited too long on Fred Van Vliet and then Freddie just walked for nothing. So being somewhat proactive is better than, than not, I, I guess. And now this puts you in a place where obviously it's not a full reset because you did get a player back in Bruce Brown. And then the previous trade, you got uh, RJ Barrett and you got Emmanuel quickly and you still have Scotty Barnes. So it's not like it's a complete, complete reset, but nonetheless, that is a way for you to, I guess, get rid of a little bit of talent. And maybe that sacrifices some wins and maybe you get some extra lottery balls. So your own first round pick being better is probably the best pick you get in this trade. It just feels good to be here. Honestly, honestly, because last year I said on this channel that until OG or until Pascal get traded, I will not be reading no mock trades with them because I never really know what Masai and was it, who's it, Bobby, Bobby Webster? I never really know what they got planned. And what they had planned was ma making these two trades. And these two trades are pretty different, right? The OG and Obi trade netted zero first round picks. And I'm assuming, I'm just assuming that because of the teams that were interested in him, that they could have got some first round capital, but instead they opted to get real players that can help and be developed in Canada right now in Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett. While the second trade of Pascal Siakam is mostly draft capital versus getting back to players. Now, again, Bruce Brown is a good NBA player, and maybe they try some, some um, Kara Lewis Jr. minutes here or there. But the first trade was players. The second trade was picks. And I, I kind of like that balance. But the market is set. The market is set. Um, and I, again, and now that we've seen OG and Pascal fall, the next name that is high on the priority list to be moved is probably DeJounte Murray because his contract is really nice. And again, he's a good NBA player. I wonder what that means for his market. 
I wonder what that means for a Zach Levine mark. Yeah, bring it into the Bulls, baby. And maybe the three first round picks for Pascal Siakam is the anomaly. Um, but a lot of people believe that because he wasn't expiring deal, the return wasn't going to be too crazy, right? And, and now that we see that those first round picks are not maybe as valuable at the as the number says, three first round picks sounds like a ton, but you think about where they're projected, maybe not that much. Maybe he's the anomaly because the Pacers have full confidence that they'll be able to resign him. I mean, here's a tweet from Mark J. Spears that said, uh, new Pacers for Pascal Siakam just got off a phone call with Rick Carlisle and President Kevin Pritchard. Siakam maintains his bird rights with the Pacers who are expected to resign him in free agency. Appears doubtful that he'll play uh, in the next game. But um, I like this trade a lot more for the Pacers than I do the Raptors. I think the Raptors did okay. Um, but I love this trade for the Pacers because they get a guy that at, at the age of, I think he's turning 30 this year. So you, you get him now before 30 and it doesn't feel as though Pascal Siakam's game will will translate bad in the next three years or so because I'm assuming that contract's probably three to four years long when you resign him he feels like a guy that will be consistently in these conversations for being an all-star caliber talent even if he never makes it again because the east is going to be crazy and he will be again the number two option behind Tyrese Halliburton even if he never makes it again we know that the talent is going to be there and given that the Pacers have been a team ran this specific way I love this a lot I'm giving it like an A- minus. And for the Raptors, I'm probably giving it closer to closer to a B, B minus. Um, because again, even though they have had success drafting any spots, it's not like you got a pick that projects to be a lottery pick. Um, so only time will tell. I, I edited this video and I've been just thinking, I'm lower on this trade for the Raptors now after editing and rethinking about it. Because there is a world that in a couple of years, you don't get anything tangible for Pascal Siakam, who's one of the greatest players in your franchise history. You did not get Jairus Walker, which I thought was a guarantee in the straight. You didn't get Benedict Matherin, which is less of a guarantee. So you got three first round picks that are probably late first rounders. And obviously those are no guarantees. I think I said B minus originally. It's pr probably a C, bro. Maybe I'm being generous. I don't know. Again, only time will tell what they use the picks to get in, in, in this draft. They also traded their pick, their their own first round pick. Now that I'm thinking about it, they traded their own first round pick for Yaka Pertle because they thought that this draft class was trash. So you just acquire, you just acquire two picks in a draft class you thought was trash last year. I, I'll talk about it more later. Haven't really been on Twitter or social media a lot today. It seems like the Warriors lost their assistant coach, Decky, um, which is... I, I didn't expect to read that right now. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's not what this video is about. Um... But I was just saying my prayers to his family, to the Warriors organization, and everybody impacted by his passing. Man, that's super young. All right, um, let me know what you think about the Pacers and the Raptors deals. Um, I will be talking about it more on the Kenny Beaton podcast, a little bit more in depth when I get my mind around it in a few hours. So, links is in the description to the Kenny Beaton podcast.